Alrighty, it's been a bit since I've done uh, my eyes wandering because I'm looking at the camera over here. Adam Bessie, you know, my partner in crime, always tells me, look at the lens, look at the lens. Anyways, I'm going to look at the lens. Um, so it's been a bit, uh, but I'm excited to start putting out some content again. Um, today I want to talk, I've been doing a today I want to talk, I've been doing, bleh, there's a blooper reel if I knew how to edit video. Uh, Today I wanted to chat about something that's come up a lot. Um, I've been involved in quite a bit of, um, you know, some detailed analysis of analytics and, and helping some businesses really understand, you know, is their website performing? Is it generating them business? You know, is there, is there really value in them updating it or paying to, to get a new website built? And, um, you know, sometimes the answer is yes, sometimes the answer is no. Um, but through that po process, we always try to identify KPIs, so key performance indicators of whether or not your website is actually succeeding in its objectives. Um, a lot of businesses, uh, you know, have websites that were built 10 years ago, and, and they don't know. Um, so, you know, we usually get analytics installed and then start digging into that data to figure out what's going on. So, KPIs and analytics and Google Analytics are, you know, they're pretty standard. Every web geek out there is going to say, well, you need to look at, or every digital marketing specialist, Every uh, SEO person, you know, great people, not just geeks, um, are going to say, well, your, you know, your standard KPIs are going to be total sessions, you know, organic traffic sources and, and, and acquisition of users, how many people are finding you on Google, um, conversions, how many people are submitting that form on your website or purchasing something on your website and things like that. But there's some additional layers if you get a little bit more granular that you need to look into um, when you're looking at KPIs because a lot of traditional brick and mortar type businesses might not, you know, they don't might not have a store online or, um, you know, maybe the, you know, understanding how many people found them from Google is, it, it's relevant, but not the only thing they should be looking at. Um, and I don't want to speak to kind of one conversation I, I had recently with a business who, you know, they have a website, they're, they're, they're a, a mechanical repair type business. And, um, you know, they don't, they have a, a contact form on their website, but their type of clientele, the demographics, you can't debate it, are not the type to fill out a form on a website. They're the type to pick up the phone and call and ask a question. So we started drilling into that and, and we started talking about of off-site KPIs and numbers. Okay, well, how many calls do you think your business gets per month? Um, when we kind of set that benchmark. Okay, there's 75 calls a month. Um, now let's look at the contact page on your website where the phone number is listed um, and, and your additional information on, on how to reach you and, and your email address and things like that and, and, and kind of benchmark that data. So right now we're getting, you know, we're, we're you're getting 75 phone calls. A lot are probably from Google, just Google um, my business, a lot are from Yellow Pages and things like that. But we do see that there's people going to the website. So there's 50 unique visitors to the website that go, that continue on and go to the contact page. So let's benchmark that number and let's benchmark your total calls. Now let's put some work in, execute some digital strategy and put some thought into driving more people through to your website, creating some awareness and see if there's a correlation between your incoming calls and your visits to your contact page and over the course of you know a few weeks even of, of driving some ad traffic through to the website um, that was the case more people going to the website meant more people going to the contact page which meant more people picking up the phone and calling and these again are people for all you geeks out there that know this stuff these aren't the people that are going to click on a link on their cell phone these are the people literally they're going to browse to a website look at the phone number dial it and then call the business and ask them a question that's the demographic of who they're dealing with um, so we, we, we set up that KPI then, okay, we know that going forward, the more people we get qualified traffic, we get to your website that then view your contact page correlates to an increase in calls, which increases to an, uh, an in um, which then there's a percentage of calls that you get every month that generally converts to a sale or a service in, in that case. So looking at KPIs is, you know, you can take your standard KPIs, unique page visits, you need to, unique visitors, unique page visits, sessions, time on page, um, you know, sources of traffic and things like that. But sometimes you need to get a little bit more granular um, with looking at your KPIs because depending on the sector you're in and the, the target demographic and the customer base and how they interact with your business, your, dig your website might be supporting you and you don't even know it. And there's ways to increase business without having to go down the traditional digital road of saying, well, we need to get more conversions to a contact form because that just might not work for you. So I guess to summarize all of this, 
What I'm saying is, you know, KPIs, website and analytics and digital ecosystem KPIs can differ for every sector. And the business owner really needs to think about how their website could potentially be servicing their business by generating leads and new sales. Boom.